Hey, welcome back, uh, YouTube friends. Um, so I'm gonna do a Q and A uh, video right now for y'all. Um, I've been posting a lot of uh, soft tail videos about the slim and the street bob back there, and uh, I've gotten a lot of inquiries just about a variety of things. And um, I'm I'm extremely grateful for the feedback, uh, the comments, the questions the likes, the subscriptions, so thank you to all of you. Uh, but I figured it would benefit everyone if, uh, even though I am, have very likely replied to each of your questions uh, individually, um, I figured it would be beneficial to address these questions um, together all in one video so that uh, maybe if, if somebody had a lingering question or maybe hadn't asked it yet or maybe it was something they hadn't thought to ask, uh, it could be addressed here today. Uh, so. Uh, first things first, just so we all know what we're looking at here, we've got two 2019 Harley Davidsons here. Both are soft tails. The blue one here is a slim. And the red one back there is a street bob. This one is mine. One back there is my buddy Anthony's. Um, but uh, we 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 share each other's bikes pretty frequently, so uh, we know enough about each of them. Um, we both picked our bikes up at Arrowhead Harley Davidson in Peoria, Arizona, and we both got a pretty kick-ass deal um, working with the sales guys there. So, uh, any anyhow, right on to uh, some of the questions here. Uh, Spencer, uh, you had asked me about my slim. If this was a uh, solo, uh, a reach solo seat. Um, so, I had demoed this bike before buying it and I demoed it with the stock seat. Um, this is not the stock seat that's on it, but I demoed it with the stock seat and what I can tell you about that was um, we know these motors to be torquey if you've ridden them. I mean Harleys in general, but these ones especially. And when I would punch it, I'd be sliding back onto the rear fender also. Uh, I am five foot five on a good day with my riding shoes and um, the boards are forward floorboards, uh, and although I didn't have an issue reaching the floorboards, what seemed to be a little problematic, not the worst thing, with the stock seat was um, getting a, a good solid first to second, second to third um, upshifting. And I had initially thought if I bought this bike I would get a shorter shifter, like maybe something from a Sportster. But looking at the street bob, I had seen that their seat had more cushion behind it and also pushed the rider forward. So um, I actually opted for a street bob seat on this slim. So the two seats you see here are identical. The seat that is on my slim is from a street bob, a 2019 street bob. And it worked out perfectly. I didn't have to change the shifter. It moved me into a perfect riding position. I absolutely could not be happier. It's comfortable. It's great. So, uh, Spencer, there you go. B Rob, you asked if uh, how the floorboards feel. Um, you know, I kind of had this opinion about floorboards as kind of like a quote unquote old man kind of setup. Um, I I wouldn't trade them. I wouldn't trade them for anything. Uh, I love them. It gives me the opportunity to put my heels forward and stretch my legs out. I can move my feet flat on the boards, and it's still a natural position and it feels more like a mid and if I need to I can move my to toes towards the back of the boards and bend my legs a little bit more. Um, it is perfect. Uh, I love them. I think it's great. So um, all right on to the next. So a lot of you guys asked about the color. Um, I was I was very particular about this color and I didn't actually even know what it was called. All I knew was that it was a very vintage looking color especially with the style of the bike being a late 40s sort of era looking motorcycle. I had to have this color. I didn't want another black bike because we all know. And nothing is black bikes. I've had a few of them. I'm just, all I'm saying is that it's, there's a reason why the manufacturers make a majority of their bikes in that color is because they know it's going to sell. I didn't want another black bike. This is Billiard Blue. Um, and I absolutely love it. Um, I think the black, all the black accents, these little pieces here and there against it, um, just look great against it. So, um, yeah, Billy or Blue. Uh, David, you asked, does the Street Bob ride like a Sportster? 
Uh, no, um, flat out, no, it does not at all. Um, and there's, I think, two things you can attribute that to. Um, the first off, it's a mono shock. Um, the Sportster's got a dual shock, um, and I don't necessarily. Aesthetically, I like a dual shock rear just because I think it's a little more classic look, but they did great with the street bob. The mono shock is right under the seat here. It's got a preload adjustment, and um, if you buy the bike, it should come with a spanner wrench and, and to adjust that. Um, right there is a major difference in the handling. It does not feel clunky. It feels very smooth um, and natural. Um, the front, I mean, I guess in a way you could compare it to a Sportster, but on the other hand, a Sportster comes in at right around the mid 500 pound range when this bike is heavier. So I believe in my opinion, it has a tendency to use more of its front suspension range. So again, I don't, I, I find it hard to compare the street Bob to the handling of a Sportster. Um, Danny, you asked, would the street Bob be a good bike to begin with? Well, Danny, I would be quite the hypocrite if I told you any bike would not be a good bike to begin with. My first bike in 2006 was a, uh, a CB, a Honda CBR 600 double R. For those of you that don't need know Japanese bikes, that is by definition a crotch rocket. Yeah, it did about 80 something in first year. You could wind that thing out to 16,000 RPMs. I bought that motorcycle at age 22, had never ridden a motorcycle, quad, dirt bike, nothing in my life. I remember when I purchased it and finished all the paperwork, the guy asked me would I be riding at home or having it delivered, and I told him without hesitation I'd be getting it delivered. When he delivered it, I had him roll it right through my front door of my bottom floor apartment and park it in my living room, and it sat there for two weeks while I'd figure out what the hell I was going to do with the thing. So, <clears throat> Danny, uh, I think... What I can tell you is that knowing what I know now from the years of riding and the different motorcycles I've ridden, and I have ridden a lot of different motorcycles and owned several, um, I would follow in the, knowing what I know now, I would follow in the footsteps of what uh, Anthony did here. Anthony's the owner of the Street Bob. His first motorcycle was a Iron 883. In about a year's time or so, he upgraded to an Iron 1200. And in about a year or so, he upgraded to this street bob. Now that seems maybe extravagant to go through all those steps. It would be a safe bet to maybe go from an 883 up to a street bob. I think that, I think the torque and the weight catch new riders a little off guard. And I think that's the only thing to be wary of. Uh, I don't, it's not to say, Danny, that you're not a capable person to learn quickly and survive. Um, I just think that above, with everything else you have to worry about on the road, other drivers, road hazards, weather, I mean, just the list goes on and on. Um, it would be nice to not have to worry about um, other factors, physics factors, such as, you know, uh, weight and uh and, you know, if you stall the bike, uh, a torquier engine, you're certainly going to feel it if you stall it as opposed to like my 600, that first crotch rocket I had, if you stalled it, it was not very violent. But if, if you stalled one of these bikes, um, it lurches forward and, and it can catch you off guard. So just just something to be wary of, Danny, whatever you end up doing, um, I know you're going to love your bike and I know you'll do your best to be safe. Just uh, ride, ride careful out there, man. Um. Josh, you asked about um, the, the mufflers on this, if I had to plug in the computer and remap the engine. No, I didn't. Um, kind of a bummer I found out is that uh, after they changed to the M8, the Milwaukee 8, there is no longer a stage one download that you can do. You have to buy a tuner. Um, if you do anything more than slip-ons, I was told that I could get away with slip-ons and not have to do the remap. Um, I can say that that's True. I mean, I'd like to. Absolutely. I think it would benefit, but um, the motor handles it fine. It doesn't have a lot of chatter on the D cell or between shift popping. If I do an air cleaner, you can bet I'm going to do a tuner. And I already looked into it. Um, the Harley tuner, and it might be Screaming Eagle. I could be saying it wrong. It may be actually Screaming Eagle tuner. It's only about 300 bucks. So I could get a Vance and Hines stage one and, um, you know, for about a hundred and a half and I could get a, uh, uh, um, the tuner for this thing. Um, 
and be set. So someday that will happen, but if you're just doing uh, slip-ons, Josh, you will be uh, just fine. Um, Zorro Z. Uh, where can I order uh, these pipes and can I get them in black? So Dean Speed Customs. Dean Speed. Dean Speed Customs. Um, on the website, it has a drop down for the slip on. They're called Rampage. Rampage. I'm sorry, a little twang there for you. They're called Rampage. In his drop down, he's going to have some options. He may not have added the soft tail yet, so um, you can find his email address on the website. You can email him and inquire about these. You can also go to the Dean Speed Customs Facebook page and message him. The owner operator, his name is Micah Dean, hence Dean Speed. Micah Dean. Um, he will, he's the one responding to your emails and your te and your uh, messages on Facebook. So, I mean, it's kind of a nice thing to be able to reach out and speak directly to the person that is going to fulfill your order, which also means make your parts, uh, handmade. So, uh, also you wanted to know about the color. Uh, so here's your polished, um, and these are, uh, stainless steel bodies. In one of my videos, I said titanium. I was incorrect. I misspoke. These are... Uh, stainless steel bodies and aluminum tips. They are polished and right here same material you have ceramic coated black and Then I believe you can also get these with uh, black bodies and black tips and I believe those are your options So I hope that answers your questions Rosie. I hope you reach out and uh, get the information you need from Micah Dean um, I absolutely love these mufflers. I know Anthony does he had them on his Sportster now. He has them on his uh, street Bob so um now, I could be saying this next this next person's name wrong or however they put their name on, on YouTube. It could be Hattie. It could be Haiti. So I apologize if I've said that wrong. But you asked where I purchased the vertical license plate bracket from. These aren't purchased license plate brackets. Um, these are the stock ones. Um, the sales guy that sold us these bikes, his name's Brad Topper over at Arrowhead Harley. I actually stole the idea from him. So if you look here which it may be a little difficult to see. There you go, some focus, hopefully that helps. What you've got is a bolt right here. And there, that might be a little bit better. It's a little out of focus, sorry guys. There you go. Okay, so you can see where this part here slid over this part here. So all you do is you pull the bolt that ran through here and you put it right here. That's it, stock license plate bracket, and I would highly recommend it because it should be less than a week's time before somebody bonks into it as they're walking around your bike seeing how great your bike looks, and then whack, they run into your license plate. So um, so that's, the, that's my list of questions, but I wanted to finish this up with letting you guys know what my plans are for my bike and Anthony's plans for his bike. Let's start with Anthony's because... It, today's Saturday and on Tuesday we're installing his new bars. So we're going with, these are 10 inch stock bars, 33 inches wide. We're going with a, an 11 inch high bar and I believe they're 30 inches wide and they're called, uh, they're called pudgy bars. Because their shape is convex. Um, and they're Dean Speed Customs. Um, we've got both of us here. We've also, uh, and I don't want to forget to mention, the blacked out lenses. JMP cycles, blacked out lenses and colored bulbs. I'm not even kidding you. Just a really cool upgrade. 20 bucks plus shipping. JMP cycles. Get it done if you have one of these because it's going to make your bike look really good. Um, Anthony's got a three inch Dean Speed Customs tank lift and of course the Rampage slip on. Um, <clears throat> my plans are. Bar it's hard to say. I, th I think I want to do bars just because the pullback is obnoxious on these. They're 33 inches wide and they have too much pullback. It's unnatural the way it feels. And to ride one handed is it's uncomfortable. So I'm probably going to do bars. You know what, you guys, if you're still watching on this video, um, by the way, hit the like button and subscribe, obviously, but go to Dean Speed Customs webpage and look at two different types of bars. You've got the KDT bars. And you've got the mongrels. That's what I'm torn between. Probably we're going to run about an 8-inch bar, whichever one I go with. Comment and let me know what you think I should do on the slim.